All right, you ready to do this, man? Yeah, I guess so. I mean, we have to. It is part of the fucking series. Ah, uh, yes. Yes. <sighs> oh, nothing like good old Alien versus Predator. Yeah. What's going on, guys? Bronco Juggalo. And Bill. And we are doing, as I just said, Alien vs. Predator from 2004. Directed by Paul W.S. Anderson, who, in my opinion, has only made, like, one awesome fucking movie and the rest of the mediocre and crap movies. Oh, what was the one awesome? Mortal Kombat. Ooh, that is a good movie. Yeah. I do like that one. That's Did he do the second one? I don't think so. Good, He's also done all the uh, Resident Evil films. Ugh. I do like the yeah. Resident Evil films. I, it's funny, I don't like the first one. I, well, I mean, I haven't watched it forever. But I thought the first one was the worst. And I didn't like them for a long time because they were not... After the series went on, I got confused. I was yeah. like, what What the fuck is going on? Just turn on? your brain off. Just turn your brain off. That's what you got to do. And just go with the mindless yeah, action? pretty much, yeah. Oh. Yeah. And don't compare it to the video game. That was my biggest mistake. Don't compare it to the game. It's, well, yeah. It's yeah, not yeah, like the game. Don't, don't. But anyway, <laughs> they're already talking about rebooting that series too. But anyways, totally off the ball here. Always. This stars Sanaa Lathan as Alexa Woods, and it also stars Lance Henriksen as Mr. Whalen, the billionaire. Yay, Bishop's back. Yep. Uh... Whatever his fucking full name is. Something Bishop Whalen. I don't uh, remember. I think it was uh, Charles, Charles yeah. Bishop Whalen. Charles Bishop Whalen. He is the founder and owner of Whalen Incorporated, which is going to become very familiar in the Alien franchise if you don't know that already. Yes. So uh, fittingly that they brought him back. He yeah, played that, the that character. was one cool thing about it is he yes. was the very first casting choice. Oh, yeah. And a very good choice because, yeah, why wouldn't you? You're founder of your company. He is the founder, right? Yeah, he was the founder. So why wouldn't you tribute uh, and make an android that looks like your founder yeah. centuries late? It makes sense. Mm -hmm. it, uh, it does. Okay. This is a fun movie, but a little fun fact. 2004, Alien and Predator have been fighting for a lot longer than that. Yep. In fact, their first appearance is right here. Mm -hmm. Dark Horse Comics presents number 36 from February of 1990. So they've been going at it for quite a while, even before this movie came out. And the idea all started with the alien skull in the Predator 2 spaceship. They actually did that on purpose. Mm -hmm. They did that on purpose, hinting towards... Hey, this might be a good movie idea. That hasn't happened. That took a long ass time to happen. Yes. Kind of like Freddy vs. Jason took a long ass time to happen. And unfortunately, big difference between this one and Freddy vs. Jason is, in my opinion at least, you know, I like this movie. This is kind of, I don't really have guilty pleasures, but if I did, this would be my guilty pleasure point. It doesn't pay off the way Freddy vs. Jason did. No. Ugh. But we'll get into why. Now, our storyline here is that a group of archaeologists led by Charles Bishop Whalen investigate a mysterious heat source in Antarctica. Technically, a little island off the coast of Antarctica. Yes, that used to be a whaling community. Mm -hmm. And there's supposed to be nothing there at all. No animals, no humans, no heat sources of any kind. They find, a few hundred feet under the ice, a pyramid where aliens and the predators play and breed. Fun times. Unwittingly, they stumbled across a predator proving ground. And they give us an entire backstory in this film on the entire history of Alien and Predator. Yeah. Kind of cool. Kind of not cool. Uh, kind of, I mean, it's it's up to you how you view it. I mean, it really I is. Could, I could see it, you know, I could see it. Because the Mayans, Aztecs, a lot of them did view their gods from the stars. Yep. In fact, I think they all did. So. so, yeah, I could see it. Okay, it's plausible. It was different. It did, it, and one thing I will salute Paul W.S. Anderson about, something I read was that 
The reason he said it in Antarctica was because he did not want to mess with the lore of either franchise. I heard this too. If he put it, say, in New York City, because that was the original idea was to put it in New York City. That wouldn't work. It was because they would have known about the Predators already because of the two incidences with the Predators already. Now, the aliens they would have known about, of course, but they would have known about the Predators, the police or the government, whoever would have known about it. They put it in Antarctica so nobody would know what was going on. Yep. Nobody knew or heard about anything that had happened. So it was, you know, no cross-contamination with the original franchises. Which I wholly agree with, and thank you, thank you. Now, the new, prequels, the new prequels for the Aliens movies have not really embraced the Alien versus Predator storyline. Well, but they haven't really disregarded them either. So You can't really say anything about Prometheus at this point in time because no. really there were the aliens weren't there no. until like the very end. The aliens weren't there, but in this storyline if they crossed it, the Predator the Wayland knew about the Predators. So Yeah. But they don't really acknowledge it, but they didn't really disacknowledge it either, if you know what I mean. They didn't really, uh, you know, disavow it or anything. So Yeah. It is what it that. is, you know. It is what it is. Yeah. And myself personally, I wish they would have finished out the trilogy of this film. Alien vs. Predator 1, as I said, kind of a guilty pleasure of mine. AVP Requiem, I think, honestly, and I know I'm going to catch shit for this, is a damn good movie if only we could see what the fuck is going on. I agree. <laughs> that is the downfall of that film, is yeah. the lighting. It was we'll much, it. It we'll was much gorier, much time. bloodier. It delivered on everything this one didn't. We'll, we'll get but, into that yeah, Anyways, time. we'll get into that later. But they hinted at a third one in that, that it never came to be because nope. it just didn't work out. Nope. And I two bombs liked to in a row. There, the, that's one thing I've noticed with this Alien franchise and even with the Predator franchise. There is a slew of sequels that were never made. Yeah. Oh, oh yeah. And um, there were people that brought... Uh, in fact, I've seen a documentary on this film and the one we're reviewing right now. And many people had brought, before this film got the green light, there had been many debris screenplays yeah. of an Alien vs. Predator that either the technology wasn't there or it just wasn't plausible to do, but they all got shot down. Yep. And this one finally got the green light. Which, and from what I hear, Paul W.S. Anderson rewrote quite a bit of it as he was directing, so. Yeah. That is what it is. Well, I think that's pretty much all the little uh, blather we want to go on with it. Yeah. We're going to get into pros and cons, and I think we'll start with cons? Um, no, let's start with the pros this time. Okay. My first pro is Lance Hendrickson. He gives a stellar performance, as always, and, you know, it's just so awesome to have at least one of the old members back. And it makes sense. You know, one of the old cast, it makes sense that he's there. That, you know, they just base an android off of him in the future. And like in Alien 3, that guy's not an android. It's just one of his descendants. Right. You know, it makes, it makes sense. It keeps with the continuity of the story. And, of course, his acting is just stellar as always. And I love, uh, oh, that's right. We forgot to mention, we're actually doing the extended version of this film. And in the extended version of this film, one of the things that he's doing at his desk... Oh, there's a pen right there. He's taking a pen, and a little tribute to aliens, he's just sitting there watching a screen going like this. A little tribute to the Alien franchise from Aliens. Yeah. Loved that. I loved that. So, I don't know. Do you have anything more to elaborate on our man here? I like I liked that Lance Harrison was the very first choice for casting. Oh. Something I forgot to mention earlier. Sigourney Weaver's thoughts on this movie was that a crossover was a terrible idea. No, it's she didn't not. like it. She, did, she thought it was totally terrible, and she said she'd have nothing to do with it. So They didn't want her to out, have anything to do well, with it. Well, that ruled out any possibilities of it being set in the actual timeline of the original franchise. Oh yeah, the comics, and so, uh, the comic books too, because mm -hmm. the comic books were based in space to begin with. 
So if you can't get Sigourney Weaver, I would definitely say take Lance Henriksen. He is pretty much synonymous with the Alien films as oh, well. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Being in two of them originally, the Bishops uh, were modeled after Mr. Whalen, so it makes sense to bring him in. Yes. And it, I liked his performance as well. I thought he does a good job. He's one of the few people, I think, that do a good job as far as the human cast go. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. The main chick, she's okay. I'm going to get into that one but later. I'm like, you know, she, she wasn't on the special. She's just there. I mean, you know. I'll get into that later. My first pro is the look of this film. I enjoy the look of the film. Uh, the place where they use CGI on the environments looks really good, which is something I find funny because if you watch the menu of this film on the DVD, the original DVD that we both have, if you look at the menu, it's like an interactive menu, and it looks more like something out of an old video game, like an early 3D <laughs> video game, it does. which I think is really it funny. Does. But the CGI is really good on it. I like the way the pyramid looks. I like the concept of the pyramid, too. I like the way the pyramid looks. I like the way the aliens look. So you like the... Uh, this kind of goes into one of my pros, too, is the set design. Yeah. You like the set. Yeah, I do. I love the whole look of this film. It's lit well. The cinematography is good. I like the way the predators look. A lot of people call these predators the fat predators. Yeah. And they're not fat. They're fucking. Well, there's huge. one that's kind of like, short and. It's not chubby. that. It's not that he is just big. You can tell by if you look really good at them. The, I don't it, know. it looks like the, I mean, they went shopping for their predators over at WWE or the. Couldn't you know, they strong have gotten a taller one? Because that one that was really short. They want. I think they wanted to show diversity, <laughs> in them, which they did a little bit in Predator. I you know, think, by the, and I'm gonna but get these guys that. were big. I mean, the main predator is just big. He's ripped. He's huge. I like the look of it. I thought it was different than the first two. And I, to me, they were made of more imposing figures than the ones in the originals did. No, 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 not me. No. I thought so. I think they were. But I, you know, little no. skinny people, I don't find intimidating. They weren't little skinny people. They were tall. I don't think he got it. I don't know. I, I don't know. <laughs> okay. Well, I agree with them. I love, I love the sets. The pyramid is awesome. And in fact, this pyramid thing, uh, the way it changes and everything every 10 minutes reminds me of the Cube franchise. The three cute movies. It reminds me a little bit of that, and I like those ones as well. I love the fact that it changes. I've never and, seen those. You've never seen those? They're on Netflix. I need to check them out. I think there's four now. There's a I, I don't know. I'm not sure. I'm not understanding that. I just thought I saw four of them, but there may be just three. Ah, well, if there's a fourth one, let me know, and I'll check it out, because I like the other. I like the three that they're you know. on. But, but yeah, love, love that. Love the whole changing aspect where everything changes. It kind of makes it a maze, a little bit of a rat hunt or, I don't know. Yeah. But, okay. My next pro is going to have to be, you know, we'll just keep going with this. The lighting in this film is great. You know, it's not so dark that you can't see what's going on, but it's not too light. You know, it's light where it's supposed to be light, it's dark where it's dark supposed to be dark. Dark where it's supposed to be dark, but not too dark to where you can't see what the fuck is going on. You think they would have, you know... I, yeah, we'll get to that next review. Yeah, yeah, next one. Next one. Don't get on another tangent. Okay. I don't give a shit if you get on another tangent. They're fun. Oh, we gotta do a review on it. Might as well talk about it then. Alright. But yeah, the lighting is perfect in this film. It... It really, people, number one in filming, get your lighting right. It makes or breaks your film, along with some other things. But doesn't matter how good your film is, you can't see what the fuck's going on. Pretty much. All right, what's your next pro? Uh, okay, my next pro is actually a specific scene in the film. Now, usually... Like I said, a lot of times I'm not big on CGI. Sometimes I am, sometimes I'm not. If done right. Yeah. There's a couple points in this film. I almost put this as a con. 
But some of the fighting in the battle scenes, and I don't, I'm not talking about, there's one particular big battle scene that's really cool. When you see thousands of aliens crawling up the pyramid and there's... Yeah, that's kind of hard stuff. not to do without CGI. Yeah, but it's it's really cool. That's, that's pretty cool looking. But I saw, thought some of the one-on-ones inside looked a little weird. A little cre- not Not so great. But then one scene happened and it totally just made me change my mind. There is a scene where the main predator is just standing there. And... There's an alien coming behind him. Oh, yeah. <laughs> and he just turns and goes, Psh! and then he goes, Psh! and he flips the blades. Yep, flips them closed again. Closes in. And the f- the the head of the predator, or the head the of alien. the alien, just slides right off. And if you look at the face of that alien, mm-hmm. its lip is twitching. Yeah. And <laughs> it was so well done. I was like, man, yes. that is good fucking CGI. Because, okay... One of my big cons on this film was its rating. Oh, uh, let's get into that later. Well, yeah, okay, we will. But there isn't a lot of human gore in this movie. Let's but get the into gore that on movie. that alien, the alien was really cool. That was yes. done really good. I really liked that. I thought that was awesome. I was like, man, that is cool right there. Yeah, and his head just sort and of then, slides off yeah. of him, and then he falls off the wall. And then with Predator, dead. he's just like, he, he's like, I'm like, damn, this is a fucking badass right hey, here. Damn, yeah. I know I'm a badass. Yeah. <laughs> so, I, you know, so yes, I liked the CGI in this movie. I thought it was good. Um, like I said, at first, because I, I was watching it, and it was right before that happened, actually. I'm watching a battle scene between a predator and the main, the main predator and the, an alien. That wasn't the and, main predator. That was uh, one of the secondary predators. Um, right before that, when he cut the dude. Yeah. When he was sitting there, you know, fixing his arm or whatever, when he got hurt right before that, I was sitting there. I, I didn't like that that battle sequence that much, but then that happened. I was like, damn, that's good. Mm-hmm. So, yeah, the CGI I thought is a big pro for me in this one. All right, I'm going to elaborate off that with my next pro. The fact that they didn't use a lot of CGI in this film. A lot of this film was practical effects. They used CGI where they needed to use it, but then they used practical effects, like robots, remote control, because a lot of the, the Predator's facial movements, too, that was all... Guys with and, little and the main al- the main alien is played by somebody. Yes, and he the is. main predators, the three predators, are all played by. And people. when they needed, uh, but, when they needed some fast movements from an alien, it was not CGI. It was a robot that they had built. Compared to the other films, though, there was a lot of CGI compared to the other ones. Well, but this one, not compared to the new prequels, it, but, yeah. they used it where they needed to. In fact, there is a documentary on this. That's where I watched that, and yeah. Well, They've used a lot of... They didn't use as much CGI as you think. They used it where they needed to. When they didn't, they used practical effects. And I like that. Mm -hmm. I don't mind that it's a robot. Like, the robot alien they had, it took six puppeteers to run this thing. Six of them. And that's very awesome. Yeah, that's cool. All right. What do you got next? Um, you know what? That's pretty much it for me with the pros. I've got one more pro. It's just a little thing, but it made sense in the film. And that's the queen being on ice. Yeah. Freezing her cool. and then when you need her, unthaw her. I thought that was a very practical thing, you know? Well, also, too, I was so thinking that may not have been a practical decision. Okay, you remember in the flashback sequences when they were telling the story and everything? Yeah. It was all tropical and shit at the time, remember? And then, you know, after the explosions and the predators left and everything, that's the climate changes and the ice happened. Now that they might could have, have frozen been... her on just by accident. You know, I right? think they had her frozen to give it because they, you know, she comes out of this thing in this, like, chamber. Yeah, that's true. She they lifted a... her out of a chamber. Yeah, so I think true. she was frozen down there. And they just, you know, unthought her when they needed her. I think that was yeah. brilliant. It was a smart way to do that. 
makes it for a good story. And as I said, guys, a lot of people hate this movie. I enjoy this film. It's a fun movie if you can just turn off all your expectations. Yeah, but, <laughs> that's a good way of putting it, turn off your expectations. But I, the fact that I only have two pros is not a, a sign that I don't like the film. Overall, I enjoy the movie, but it's not a great film. You know what I mean? And no. where the film falls no. short, and we're going to start my cons here, where the film falls short is in the storyline. Now, the Predator alien story, the back storyline, does not bother me. It's the human and Predator storyline that bothers me. The team-up made no sense. Yeah. I, I used to like it when I was younger. I used to be like, man, that's respect right there. But then I started watching it more and more. I mean, that was the younger me watching it, you know? Yeah, yeah I, I didn't it. like it when I, I saw it, it more the first time. time. The last time I watched this movie was when... The last time I watched this movie was... I was marathoning the films. And I've, okay, when Requiem came out, I watched this movie right before Requiem came out. And then it came out. And then I bought Requiem and didn't watch it. And then, like, four years later, I marathoned all the films in both franchises. Nice. And that's the last time I watched that. And that was like, we were living together at the time. We were roommates at the time. That was a long day. So that was over 10 fucking years ago. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, a long, long time you know, ago, it's man. been a while, you know, so. Um, but yeah, my that that team up storyline where she is running around with the predator, the, the the enemy of my enemy is my friend type of deal. I I didn't like it. I thought yeah. it was dumb. He was supposed to, you know. I get that. Okay, she may not have been a threat, and there's a, a lot of, you know, the predators don't kill just anybody. A lot of people think they're mind that they're not. They don't kill everybody. They go after targets and they hunt threats, and that's yep. it. Okay, that that you're on one of my cons as well. Okay, you're on one of my cons as well is the interaction between the predator and Woods. Oh my God! In that running scene, oh the Batman, the Batman and Robin scene. Yeah, <laughs> that's the Batman and Robin scene. How the running? hell does she keep up with him? She should be way. He should be way faster than her. And how the hell does she outrun an alien queen? Yeah. Uh, the Batman and Robin scene is fucking hilarious. Uh, yeah. That was one part that I was like, oh my god, that's just dumb. Oh, it was so stupid. Yeah. I did like the battles with the queen. That was cool. Yeah, that was that, cool. That was cool. They were like, you know, but... Like, oh god, that running scene. Oh lord, that haunts me. <sighs> Uh, My first real soda in like two years. You getting a buzz? No. Nope. I thought he'd be getting a sugar rush off that. No, it's got a lot in it, but. Oh. I'm going to get into my first con of this film, and I'm going to just go and extend off of this. Is the fact this Woods character. She is loosely, loosely based off of a character from one of the Alien vs. Predator comics. Uh, that one right there! See, she's marked, but on her forehead and not her cheek. Loosely based off of this character right here. Oh god, I gotta have my notebook for this, because this character's name is... The comic book's hotter, too. Oh, yeah. But, okay, how would you pronounce this? this Machiko Masachi? Nah, Machiko Masachi. Masachi. Mas whatever. Is that character in the comic's name. Oh. And, yeah. This she gets a, marked by a predator, too. This is pretty beat up. Can I borrow this? <laughs> yeah, you can I borrow that. It. I want to read it. But she's just so loosely based off that character. Uh, it's like they tried to bring an aspect of the comic book in, but oh my god. Was this, this did come out before? Yeah, that came out long ago. And that's actually the yeah, second. This is 95 on it. This so. is the second part with that character. I don't have the first part with that character where she actually gets marked by the Predator. Yeah. I don't so this it. was actually based loosely on one of the storylines. She, she was, no, not the storyline. Not the storyline at all. Just the character oh, really? was based. These two characters are loosely based on each other. 
that's about it. The only resemblance is that they're both female, and this predator marks her on the cheek. The predator in that comic marks her on the forehead. That's about it. I, I didn't like that. I didn't like that at all, especially since I really enjoyed, like you said, that's beat up, to, that's a graphic novel that's beat up to hell. I've loved that graphic novel a lot, reading it over and over again. It's a great one. My turn? Yep. My next con is all of the cutaway kills. There is not a single human kill that we really get to see in this movie. Every yeah. single now cutaway kills can work, mm -hmm. but not in this fucking franchise. Not in either franchise, and not in this way. I mean, they, it it got a PG thirteen rating for Christ's sake. This is one of my and then the unrated well. version, the unrated special edition version, does Yay. not give you anything extra on that. So why is it unrated? What made it unrated? I mean... Nothing made it unrated. There's no cursing in this film. Yeah, there's nothing. Yeah, before she says the fuck word, it cuts it off. Yeah. But Even anyways, in the unrated. Mm -hmm. There is... Yeah, it's... All the kills are cutaways. There is yep. no human gore whatsoever. This is a None. con of mine as well. There is some alien gore, and there's a little bit of predator... Well, not even really a tiny, tiny bit. Tiny bit. Anyway. That's what I mean by the look. It looks really good. That queen looks amazing. Yeah. Um, but, yeah, there is no... All Where's my gore? kills are just... Yeah. Where's I want to see people die. Where's my I fuck? Mean, in fucking Alien Resurrection, for Christ's sake, she takes a shotgun and reaches it up through a body. I mean, I want to see shit like that, you know? And from these two <laughs> franchises, I expect... My blood and my gore. This mm -hmm. is one of my cons. This is the biggest con for this film. The lack of blood and gore. And jeez. Oh my gosh. Oh darn. Oh darn. There ain't no cuss words in here. Come on. We're adults here, people. We want the nitty gritty stuff, man. We want that stuff. We don't want this pussy footing around here. Yeah. I know they were trying to go for the big summer blockbuster release and all that shit or whatever. They're trying to make money. That's they were it. trying to, you know, reach a wider audience, whatever. It just, it falls short for me. It That's ended up it being the short. downfall of this film. Yeah, pretty Because this film bombed in the box office. No, it did. It actually did. No, well. it did not do It did well low. enough for them to greenlight a sequel. I mean. Why was the sequel rated R then? And That's why. That's the thing is. Remember when they came out, we were like, oh, all right, we're going to get it right here, finally. You know, and... Uh, oh, God, we'll get into yeah. that piece of shit. In the theater, well, okay, we'll get into that next time. All right, we'll get into that next time. Yes. But yes, so what was your next one aside from the no gore, no... no. Okay. I'm going to get into my last con here. I don't have a favorite kill in this movie. I do, but There's it's on an alien. There's no kill in this movie that's good. It's blah. All of it's blah. My favorite, and it's not even a, it's not a human kill, it's the kill on the alien when he... Well, that was just cool. It's like, that was a badass. But... I have no favorite kill in this film. That is my last con. Yeah. There is no gore. Do you have any more? I do. I have one more con. And this is my biggest con. There is no sense of fear in this movie at all. You're right. The very first Predator movie is an action movie. It is not a horror movie. It is an action movie. It's a sci-fi action but movie. Still, you felt a little tense but at you times. you felt fear when that Predator was... Well, you might not have, but you could feel the sense of fear yeah. when that Predator is stalking. Predator 2 is a flat-out horror action sci-fi movie. Yeah. Aliens. Yeah. I never originally considered them really horror. There's a lot of horror well, films. Well, they consider Jaws Alien. a horror film, Yeah, I don't too. consider Jaws a horror film either. But that's just... well, they do consider it, and but, they're kind of Okay, silly. so Alien 1 had a lot of, you felt, some fear. Or a sense of yes. fear, at least. Or anxiety, at least. Aliens was more action. You, Aliens was more action than horror, but... Yeah, but you there still, still had your gore. And every gore single aspects. one of these movies, you had a sense of fear in, until this one. Yeah. This one feels yeah. like 
Alien versus Predator at Disneyland. Yay, Disneyland! That's, that's what it reminds me of. It's, it's, it's uh, fun, wow. but there's no sense of dread. There's no sense of fear. There's not a single scene in here where I'm like, oh shit, what's going to happen? There's not even a jump scare in here. Not a, little, a lot of people talk shit about oh. jump scares. I myself am not a big fan of jump scares if they're overused. Yeah. Uh-huh. But one jump scare in a movie can be fun. Yeah. It, it catches you all guard. You're like, your heart beats just a little bit faster, and it's not bad. Now, when they overuse them, I they agree. do it time and time and time again. That's all you're. Then you're like, okay, okay whatever. Let's let's yeah, get so, off this kick. But there was no <laughs> sense of fear in this movie. At I agree, all, and that is my I biggest agree. con of this film. I agree. No, so, no sense of. I agree. As with much you as I like the look of the movie, it it, even the beautiful. there was nothing that inspired dread. Okay, the original Halloween, the music playing, just the darkness and the shot. The shots, uh, you know, Michael Dean had to be in the scene, and you felt some dread. This one, nothing. I'm just like, hey, hey, boom. Hey, you know, violence. That's all know. we're getting out of this. And no gory violence. Just no violence. gory violence. But anyways, guys, that is it for our thoughts on Alien vs. Predator. Thank God we're done with this I'll one. I'll bet you anything this is probably our least watched franchise, or in the, entry in the franchise, but that's okay. Oh, please watch um, it. Please send your hate if you actually like this film. Because, wow, please tell me why you do. I wow. told him, but, you know. Like I said, this is my guilty pleasure of the franchise, I guess. I I enjoy it, but it is not a good film. I just it's can't just turn off my brain. I mean it. Come on. I've been reading the... I've been watching these movies since I was a little kid. I've been reading the comic books, and I'm finally... Yay! I'm getting what I want! I'm getting this movie! <laughs> I wanted to cry after I saw it. Don't worry, I'll get you a bottle. I think I need a hug after seeing this piece of shit again. Entries for hugs. Put your entry in the bottom. I'm not giving them one. I wouldn't want you to. Blech. He always tries to give me a reach around every time. Grab my ass. That's you. Oh, yeah. <laughs> anyway, Anyways, this is Bronco Juggalo saying peace. And Bill saying good night. Yeah. Place your dead homie, M-E-C. Ten years in the making. Know about it, bitch. Duck sack, I got your back. Hand you back for the anti-jack. Parked on Mac in a purple lap. Trying to fatten up.